the Republican Red Whimper. I know some of you guys are uh, just disappointed. I'm disappointed. But uh, I'm here to provide you some sense of, of some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> of liberation, if you will. All right. This, this is all preordained, and I'm going to share with you why, man. I know that sounds conspiracy theory. It doesn't matter. Do you know that the Republican National Committee and the Democratic National Committee, the RNC and DNC, are private businesses, private corporations? Did you know that? They're private businesses. What does a business exist to do? Well, let's make money. How does a business exist to uh, make money, I should say? How does a business make money? by keeping people entertained and committed to their business. So how does the uh, NFL, why do you think parody is king? Let's just look at something real quick. Here's Pete Rozelle, used to be commissioner of the NFL, who said parody. He was always going for parody. Two teams, or a league that has a bunch of, not eight and eight teams, but anyone could compete at any given time. That was his mode to get the NFL where it is today. It's amazing, actually. The guy was brilliant. Here's a thing in the New York Times from 1982. Pete Rose is a parody, is parody mediocrity. And Pete Rose sells, Roselle says no. A few call it parody, others cry mediocrity, but in cities like San Francisco, Cincinnati, and New York this weekend, as well as in millions of televisions across the country, football fans are using the team, the term excitement and entertainment as they watch one of the most interesting seasons in my 22 years as commissioner of the NFL. It's been a season in which a record average of 60,000 tickets were sold for each of the 224 regular season games. Uh, just, uh, uh, more than 25% were decided by three points or less. Ratings were up over uh, ratings uh, were up over 1980, including the highest ratings in the 30 year 13 year history of ABC's prime time. Uh, and it has been a season which six of the ten playoff teams were not participants last season. What accounts for all this? Largely the fact that while the NFL's 28 teams are clearly competitors on the field. There are co-producers and co-sellers in producing and marketing. In that regard, they are not competitors. They have a rather common enterprise. Huh. Sounds awful interesting, does it not? Sounds like something else. So let's look at uh, right here. Federal candidates and political committees are on track to spend $9.3 billion on the 2022 elections, of which... Uh, the Republicans spent $4.7 billion. The Democrats spent $3.5 billion. That $4.8 billion includes spending disclosed to the Federal Election Committee by candidates. That doesn't include walking around money. Nine point three is slightly less than $9.9 billion adjusted for inflation in the 2020, 2020 election cycle. But the 2022 election cycle is what? is a midterm where people aren't nearly as interested. It's a business, my friends. And just like the NFL, the business consists of making things so close, neck and neck, that no one party dominates. I, I cannot stress, and once you realize this, you're like, oh, oh, I get it now. It's all preordained. Now, I don't know what preordained means. Does that mean they preordained Herschel to lose to Warnock or Vice? I don't know. But it's preordained to be close enough, just like that heroin when he's got to catch the dragon. He's like, I, I'm almost there. I got to pump some more. I can get that dragon. Finally, you never catch the dragon. You will never catch the dragon in politics. You just never will. Look, I've been a political junkie for freaking years. I mean, literally, I know what it's like to be devastated when your guys lose. Like my wife's like, how the hell did Fetterman win? It's all preordained. And again, I don't know if they preordained individual races, but the overall scheme of things, of course, is preordained. It's a way to keep you entertained, to make money, to be right there. If we only donated 250 more to Oz, Dr. Oz, we would have won. Maybe, but it doesn't matter. It's going to swing back and forth just enough to keep you entertained. The 49ers will beat the Bengals on the last minute drive. And the Bengal and the freaking Raiders would beat this, the the uh, when the Raiders won against the Eagles. You know, Brian Sipe threw an interception in the end zone. Mike Davis caught it in the last minute drive. Never mind the drive for the uh, Broncos. It's always a way to keep you entertained enough to keep watching, to keep spending money, so these guys can make more money.
they don't care who wins. They're going to win as long as it's that close. Nobody cares who wins. They just want the money. There's nothing you can do about it. Now, I still vote for the red. You know, I still vote for Republicans. I'm still disappointed. But if you look at it like the NFL, you recognize it doesn't matter. It's always going to be like this, and there'll never be anything substantial done, which is probably a good thing. Gridlock's a good thing, man. You see what I'm saying? It's just, you don't want it. I mean, look what happened in 2020. This is where I'm so disappointed. I was hoping there'd be a, a coming to Jesus moment for the perpetuate, perpetrators of 2020, and there wasn't in 2021. There won't be. These guys will ride off to the sunset. It sucks. But God says, vengeance is mine. And if you uh, believe in God, then you recognize, oh, well, you know, we gave it our shot. We, we, didn't, we didn't win. No one's coming to take your firearms. No one's coming to steal your food. Just just freaking move on, man. All right, more about this on the live stream later at noon. We'll see you. Love your thoughts.